This is a simulation between this large merchant ship, ore carrying merchant ship, and a state of the art Japanese submarine, the Soryu, in February of 2021. How could something like this happen? Well, when we picture something like this, what we're doing is we're extrapolating what we see, our experience driving the car on the highway, and we're putting that into this kind of a situation and saying, well, how, how could these guys be so dumb as to try and surface the submarine in front of this big merchant ship? So what's happening is the submarine, it's off the coast of Japan, it's coming relatively close to and it's and it's sort of in the area where there's busy shipping traffic and this merchant ship is coming up behind as you can see and then the summer as the submarine comes up they are surprised by the merchant ship they can't get out of the way fast enough and boom the merchant ship makes fortunately it's a glancing blow and uh, a couple of people sustain minor injuries but that's it the merchant ship doesn't even realize they hit they hit anything they just keep on trucking. <laughs> so what we're doing is we're projecting what it's like to drive a car on the highway to what it's like to drive a submarine underwater. But there are a couple of key differences and I'm going to go over four of them. Number one, imagine that your windshield was totally fogged up and the only thing you knew about the outside was what you could hear. Now what you hear is a lot less precise than what you can see. Stand on the side of the road, shut your eyes, say, just how many vehicles are there? If I, when I open my eyes, how many will I see? Where are they? How far away they are? Because if we're just listening, we can get tricked. Something that's very loud and far away can sound still relatively loud. A big truck, even though it's far away, will still sound loud. But something that's quiet, like an electric vehicle, close, won't make be noisy at all, but it's still very close to us. So generally speaking, things that are louder or closer, things that are quieter or further away, but it's not always the case. And there's some uh, tremendous exceptions to this. And this gets people in trouble. Number two, remove your rear and side view mirrors. Submarines, because we're listening, we don't hear what's behind us because the sonar is up here in the bow of the submarine. And we have these things, we call them baffles, which is because this is where the sonar is, you can't hear any of this in this area back behind you. All you can do is hear in this area. So to find out what's behind you, you actually have to turn the submarine and basically listen behind you and then come back. But all this takes time. And if what's coming behind you is very quiet and it's coming toward you, as is in the case here, you might not hear it, and if you do hear it and it's very quiet, you might think it's further away than it actual, actually is. Number three, remove all traffic signals, remove stop signs, remove the lane lines, and in fact, remove all the roads. The better way to do it is to picture basically a giant parking lot where people can crisscross and go in any different direction. Now, there are lanes in the ocean. Some, many of them are informal, so all the eastbound traffic moves in one general area, and the westbound traffic moves in the in a different general area. And some, some areas have specific lanes marked that you're supposed to stay in. But even then, the lane is wide and you, you could be slightly to one side or the other. There, there are no lane lines. There's just all traffic going in the same direction stays over here. It's, it's kind of dicey. We, we went into Tokyo One, which is the main shipping channel into Tokyo, and uh, on the surface, and we were going to the Yokosuka uh, U.S. Navy base, so you're coming up and you're in this, in this, you have these big ships all, they're just like continuously streaming into Tokyo and then continuously going out. And you got to cross, you got to turn left and cross. It's dicey. <laughs> uh, and then number four is no one can see you. So imagine that your vehicle is, is invisible. Now we all take responsibility ourselves for, uh, for safety. But in... A uh, rare case, if you make it a left-hand turn and someone's coming toward you, they see you and they may, and, and if you stall out, say in the middle, they're going to slow down ideally and, and, and help avoid an accident. But on a submarine is invisible to everybody else. So all the responsibilities on the crew of the submarine, this is the way it needs to be because no one else you can't, doesn't even know you're there. And so, um, I don't have tremendous insight into what happened here. There's, 
Not a lot of detailed reporting yet. But even if these guys did everything right, they check their baffles before starting to come up. It's a dicey time. Until you get that periscope up and you can actually see what's up there, there's always a possibility that there's some kind of a situation like this. And this just happens to be a particularly unfortunate situation. Now, what I think could have done better is not say, okay, in this situation, how could we have done better? But why were we in this situation? In other words, why did I choose this location to surface the submarine? And this is one of the things that we would talk about in intent based leadership. The officers were used to, to, someone would tell them, this is your surfacing position, and they would drive the submarine there, and then they would do their best to surface the submarine at that location. And when we flipped it to this idea of state your intent, the officers would come to me and say, hey, I intend to surface the ship here at this time so that we can then subsequently Enter, enter port. And because they were making those decisions, we got to talk about well, what makes a good surfacing position, what doesn't make a good surfacing position. You don't want to surface way out in the middle of the ocean because they're going to take all, all a long time to drive into port and all that time you're not a submarine. On the other hand, if you come in too close, then the traffic gets really dense like this and you're just raising the possibility that you're going to have an accident like this. Four ways submarines are different than driving on the highway. Number one, no windshield. Number two, no rear view or side view mirrors. Number three, no lane lines, traffic signals, or even roads. And number four, you're invisible. That's why we end up with accidents like this. Fortunately here, no one was um, significantly injured. I'm David Marquet. That's your Feedback Friday Nudge.